More of the Zach Kelp Show on Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. Welcome back in. We continue to remember the life of Roy Holiday today on the Zach Gelb Show. And like I've said numerous times throughout the program today, Doc was not only a Hall of Fame player, but more importantly, he was a Hall of Fame person. And we all knew how much of a great father he was, how much of a great teammate he was, and even a member in the community. And it's unfair uh, that Doc doesn't get to continue to live his life as he did pass away yesterday at the age of 40, and he was gone way too soon. Someone that was extremely close to Roy Doc Holiday was Charlie Manuel, the former Philadelphia Phillies manager, and he's kind enough to hop on board with us right now. Charlie, we send our condolences to you and your family and everyone that uh, is a fan of Major League Baseball because we lost a really special one yesterday. We appreciate you coming on today. Yeah, we sure did. I want to thank you and uh... – uh, I had a tough night last night, but uh, today I figured that, you know, like I wanted to uh, talk and say good things about Roy. I, uh, you know, like a deep, it's a deep sorrow for me. Like a, I kind of was sick all day after I heard yesterday. It's a somber day today, no question. And it's, we're going to be in a somber mood for a long time about this one. And, Charlie, you know how, how close he was to his family, his wife, and his two kids. Just tell me a little bit about his family because my heart – uh, breaks for them on a day like this. Yeah, his wife's name was uh, Brandy, and uh, she was she was a very first class person. She was she was a tremendous mother, and she was uh, enjoyable to talk to. He had two sons, one Ryan and one uh, Braden. Uh, they played baseball on Roy's team, and uh, I used to go down there the last couple of years. I'd I'd go talk to their team. I'd go. Uh, and I'd watch him play, and he was very proud of his team. But but five or six days ago, when I talked to him, he told me that uh, they were 13 and 0, and he said that I better get down there and see them. And, uh, and I told him I would. And uh, you know, like I've been uh, last two years, I've seen quite a bit of him, especially this summer. I when in uh, Gulf Coast League and also Clear, uh, Clearwater Threshers. You know, like I when I go see them play, he was always there talking to the kids and working with, with them, and uh, and he like was I really enjoyed seeing him, and I became real close to him. As a, uh, his family is absolutely amazing. They're they're very solid people, and uh, you know, like uh, I've you know, like I just have a lot of hurt for the uh, for his wife and the, the the two boys. I mean, it's unreal, really. I mean, they are so close to their father. You know how much of a great person he was, like you were just saying uh, about the things that he did with his family. He was also a great teammate. Uh, there's one thing to be a great athlete, but there's another thing to be a great teammate and a great person. Why did he just get that so much and take so much pride in not only being a great athlete, but also being a great person and really connecting with the fans as well? I think, you know, uh, he had a lot of, you know, like, uh, things were, were not about Roy. You know, like, he, uh, he loved baseball, and he, and he loved the, the, the part where he competed. And, you know, like, he had to keep uh, staying at the top of a mountain. You know, like, he, he had to be the best. That's why he had such a, uh, uh, you know, like a big uh, workout regi- uh, regiment thing, a routine. You know, like, he, you know, like that's kind of how he attacked things. But that, uh, off the field, around in the clubhouse and stuff like that, he's very easygoing, and he uh, he likes to talk to people. But he he didn't say a whole lot. He kind of let them talk. And I think it uh, everything about him was it was a we and us. Uh, he was that he's that way on our team. When he pitches no uh, perfect game in Miami, of course that's when he bought uh, the team all uh, like uh, sixty watches and. And you know, like, and they were very, very, uh, real nice watches. And he'd been, and on the, and the first thing I remember him saying, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, all of us did this or something, you know, like, and it was, you know, like, it was absolutely right. I mean, that's exactly who he was. He, he would do anything for you. And you knew you need to have that team culture to win. And you guys already won a World Series before uh, he got there with the Philadelphia Phillies. But uh, in 2011, I thought it was really neat uh, when they made a big deal about the four aces. He said, no, we're five aces and included Joe Blanton uh, into that conversation. Yes, I, uh, you know, like that right there is the kind of way that they wanted to look at it. You know, like that's the way that, you know, like they wanted to have it. 
And and after all, you know, like uh, Blanton was one of our five, you know, like in, in – uh, and Roy didn't want him to be treated any other way. And, that, you know, like that, that, that's, that, that's a team player, and, and that's kind of what it's all about. Talking to Charlie Manuel right now on the Zach Gelb Show, Fox Sports 920, the Jersey. As we remember, Roy Holiday, who passed away yesterday at the age of 40. The day that the Philadelphia Phillies acquired uh, Roy Holiday in that trade with the Blue Jays, what do you remember about that day, Charlie? I remember, uh, I kind of, I, I knew that they'd, uh, we'd been talking to him, and uh, when uh, Ruben called me and told me that that we had Roy Holiday, I, you know, like I, you know, like I, you know, like I was very really happy, you know, like I, uh, uh, I, I felt like, yeah, man, that's exactly what we need, you know, like we got the best pitcher and one of the best best guys in baseball, and uh, you know, like, and and he didn't let let me down at all. He was that, that he he was ever a bit that good. When when you guys got him, there's one thing when someone comes in with the pedigree that he has, but then you got to see uh, the hard work and you got to hear and see what Chase Utley posted yesterday uh, about how early Roy uh, would arrive to the ballpark. When you have someone that has accomplished that much and you already have a team that has accomplished a lot uh, with that core that the Phillies had, or just what kind of tone did that set uh, in the clubhouse, knowing that the ace really uh, of the staff, uh, the, the the workhorse of the staff, the guy that you knew you were going to get a win out of every fifth day, put so much hard work into it. Was that contagious in that locker room? Without a doubt. I mean, he uh, uh, he came to our, our our ball club and basically he had instant success. And what uh, Chase Utley was talking about yesterday, uh, I remember that. I, I I I remember that just like it was yesterday. I. Uh, uh, I got to the ballpark about five o'clock in the morning. I usually beat everybody there, and Roy was there before me. And he had he was almost done working out. And I walked in the weight room, and he's in there by himself. And he had I don't know exactly how many how much weight he was squatting with, but believe me, it was a it was a lot of weight. You know, like it, and I kind of wanted to tell him, "Hey, Roy, take it easy." But you know, but then when I looked at him, you know, like I, and that was his routine. And actually, you know, like. Uh, uh, I used to be the first at the ballpark, and all of a sudden we kind of had a game on who was going to get there first. And he, and you know what? Most of the time it was Roy. We just had wheels on as we're talking to Charlie Manuel right now on the Zach Gelb Show. And uh, Chris Wheeler was always telling me how tough it was for you uh, when you had to yank him out of the game. Uh, just reflect on that a little bit. Yeah, you know, like uh, he never wanted to come out of the game. When he started the game, you know, like he felt like that, you know, like he was going to finish it. And uh, you know, when uh, if he got hit a little bit, he you know, like he he was that he, he was very that much more determined, you know, like that he was going to finish it. Uh, but uh, but at the at the same time too, Roy was very professional. I'd walk off up out of the dugout, walk to the mount, and uh, when I get about I don't know fifteen twenty feet from him, he'd start looking at me and all and staring, and I always made sure that I looked back at him just as hard. And he was uh, and he would never say nothing except. You know, when the game was over, or something he'd come in and he'd say, hey, "Chuck, you know I wanted to stay in that game. You know I wanted to finish that. I, I think I could have finished it." And I said, "I know, Roy." I said, "But, but you know, like you had so many pitches or whatever. I, you know, I had I, I, I gathered up some kind of excuse, and uh, and I you know, and I would tell him, and he would never question me or nothing like that because that's who he was. He was, I mean, he he was ever bit he was ever bit of professional. That was he was the ultimate professional, really." We all know the bonds that are created in this game and the brotherhood that is preached uh, in this game, especially when you have a team uh, that has had so much success like your Philadelphia Phillies teams uh, did have. But there was an extra special bond between Chooch and uh, in Carlos Ruiz and also Roy Halladay. Just how about what you were able to observe about the relationship between those two? Absolutely. Uh, you know, something I, I give Roy a lot of uh, of. of of credit uh, uh, that Chooch got much better. You, you know, like when uh, uh, Roy and uh, some of our guys, you know, was in our rotation because I, I think that Roy, with the way he set him down before the, not the, uh, the day that he pitched, he set him down for about a half an hour or something, et cetera, and talk and go over the game, the game and, you know, like he would tell Chooch what he wanted to do and how he wanted to pitch all his, the, every guy and everything. And, uh, and you know, like, and Chooch really took a lot of interest in it. And not only that, you know, like he he got much better. He got better 
not only calling the game, but he got better blocking balls, and also uh, his whole game is hitting picked up. And uh, Roy would pitch, and, you know, like and after the game, if we, especially when he did real good, he'd come in there and he'd say, how many times do you think I shook Chooch off tonight? And I would say, I don't know. And he'd look at me and he'd go, none. And, I, and, and you know, like, and he'd laugh. And he'd say, that's pretty good, isn't it, Charlie, or something like that. And, uh, he always, he always uh, gave Chooch a lot of credit. If you, if you remember when they'd interview him after the game or something, he'd stand up and Chooch was the first guy, he'd, the first name he'd, he would bring up. And, you know, like, and, and, and how he helped us win the game and things. And uh, he kind of uh, he kind of stayed real close to Chooch, and uh, he taught Chooch a lot about uh, catching and the game of baseball. I think you know how much he loved the game, and he would have been a great pitching coach. And uh, we know he was an instructor, a guest instructor with the Phillies for a few years, and uh, more recently. And you were talking about the work that he did uh, with his son's team. Why was it so important to him to just continue to teach the game uh, of baseball and try to probably further pursue it? Um, after his career did end, yeah, he do something. He loved don't do something. He loved the game. He liked working with uh, players. You know, like he wanted to. He liked developing them, and he wanted to get better. And I think I think the way that he uh, after he got came to the big leagues and they sent him back down all the way to A ball, and uh, I think there was two people that really played a uh, played a big part in his career, and that was Mel Queen, that was his pitching coach, and Harry Harry Dorfman. Uh, you know, like he was a sports a psychology guy, and uh, Roy always had he had he he always had a, a lot of great things to say about those guys. Mel Queen was a good friend of mine. I played baseball with him in Puerto Rico in the early '70s, and I got to know him real good. And when when Roy found out I knew him, you know, like he the, uh, oh he used to talk to me about him all the time. And I, uh, and I think those two guys, the way that they evidently helped him in, uh, in the game. He, I think that set the stage for him, like the pool for everybody. And also, he liked working with kids and, and, and the minor league players, you know, like them, uh, helping them develop their pitches and, and location and things like that, which and he, he was, he, and he was going to be a great teacher. You yeah. always, and he loved the game that much. You always know how much pride he took in this job, and if he ever had a bad performance, how he apologized for it. And apologize. He sent texts to Ruben Amaro Jr. and I'm sure you got a few of those uh, as well. But this was someone that was just so special. And if you look at it, only spent uh, four years here in Philadelphia and has made a big time impact uh, in the city of Philadelphia, which has seen many great athletes. But your relationship. Uh, it's an interesting one, manager and then a pitcher. Uh, why were you guys so close? What was it about it that even someone that was only here for three to four years, uh, you guys just became so close even after uh, his playing days in Philadelphia? I think it, he, uh, I think he trusted me, and he and he uh, felt like it. Uh, I was honest with him, and you know, like in uh, vice versa, I you know, like I felt the same way, and uh, I, I said yesterday. That you know, like it, I I didn't I didn't look at Roy as, as as I was a father image to him. I looked at him as my young brother, and it, you know, like it was somebody that I wanna that I that I wanted to spend time with. You know, like and enjoy being around him every day. And you know, plus I got to the ballpark early, and so did he, and we had time to uh, you know, like to chat on just about every day. And you know, like and and we got to know each other real well. I'll never forget when. He was hurt, and you knew his career was coming to a close. And I know that was your last year uh, with the Phillies, how he apologized to the fans uh, for the performance that he had on the mound. And, you know, you can't control injuries in this game, nothing that anyone would expect him to apologize for. Just that last season, what was it like for you, knowing how badly he wanted to perform well in the injuries and how much time he had to miss? What was that like uh, during that time period to see Roy go through that? Yeah, that was real. That was very tough. And not only it was tough on Roy, but it was very tough on on myself, and it was tough on our players because they knew, they knew how much Roy uh, put into the game, and you know, like, and you like, and how much he wanted to help us. And you know, like, when he didn't pitch good, you know, like, uh, he never had an excuse, and uh, he was a stand up guy, and uh, he uh, he he definitely was filled with the blame, and uh, a lot of times it definitely wasn't his fault, but. Uh, that's kind of who he was, and, and you know, like, and I think that's why our uh, players all loved him, and you know, like, and they, 
uh, looked at him as, uh, you know, some, someone who was above them, you know, like are, 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 are ahead of them. And I think it, uh, the fact that how he handled that, you know, like he didn't say too much and, and it, and it wasn't a, he act like it wasn't a real big deal to him. And it, it, as far as the tension part goes, and, it, and, and that made for a real good teammate and, a, and, a, and just a, uh, kind of a silent leader. Two more questions for Charlie Manuel, who joins us right now. Uh, the perfect game and the no-hitter. I know you brought up the watch story, which just is a tremendous uh, story. But what do you remember about those nights, the perfect game uh, in the regular season up against the Marlins and then the no-hitter in the postseason uh, up against the Reds, Charlie? Two different, uh, two different type pitch games, and that's because of Roy's talent. You know, in Miami, the night he threw the perfect game, you know, like he had a good fastball. The weather was probably somewhere from 95 to 96, 97. And, uh, you know, like it was hot and muggy. And he had a real good fastball. And he probably threw 75% of the time with fastball, even maybe more. But he was locating his fastball in and out, up and down. And he really, uh, you know, like, and he, and he got through the first, but the first five or six innings very quick. And uh, the game, you know, like the game was closed, and you're know, like, and here he is, you know, like, and he just has to bear down uh, because it's so close, and uh, we're ahead. But uh, I think it was one nothing, and he uh, and he was busting the ball, you know, like, and I and he gets he starts getting into the sixth and seventh inning, and it seemed like he just uh, had more stamina, and he just kept going, and he, and and you look up, and uh, actually it was a tremendous game to watch because how he went through the hitters. And the next no-hitter he pitched against Cincinnati was kind of opposite. He had basically everything going for him. You know, like he had all of his pitches, although his fastball might not have been as high in velocity, but he, ha- he had a good fastball, and he used all of his pitches, like his, bra- uh, his curveball, his slider, uh, his sinker, uh, his cutter. I mean, he-, he had all the pitches to go. I mean, he- everything he threw moved. And he commanded both sides of play and up and down. And it was a heck of a game. He got to the sixth inning. And I thought to myself, I looked up and his two outs in the sixth inning. And I thought, well, he gets through this inning. He's going to throw a no hitter. And uh, he sure did. And, you know? and also that, that final play when that little dribbler is right in front of Ruiz and he makes that play very fitting uh, that Ruiz makes a great play just with the connection that those two guys had to end that one. You know what I, I was watching yesterday when they showed that on uh, MLB, and I I watched him uh, his and when Chooch made a heck of a play on the ball first of all, uh, but then when he did and, and he called a guy out, Chooch was Chooch knew that he had a no hitter, but Roy, if you go look, he kind of he kind of stood there and paused for a minute, and then he just kind of walked walk over and hugged Chooch, and uh, I think it took a while for him to sink in, and he actually threw a no hitter. I believe that. Especially on the stage that it was too, Charlie. Uh, first postseason right. start. Is it waiting the whole time for that, and you do that. It's what made him so special. Exactly. He was a very spe- he was very very special. I, you know, all those things that you hear, Cole Hamels and Ryan Howard and Utley and all those guys, all those guys that have played against him and all all those years and things. When they say the things that uh, about him, you know, like you never hear anybody say anything negative about Roy Holiday. And, I, you know, like that's a pretty good trade. Charlie, you're the best. Once again, uh, our condolences here at the radio station to you and, of course, his beautiful wife and his two kids. Just uh, terrible news yesterday. My heart breaks for the family. My heart breaks for you as well. And we can't thank you enough for giving us some perspective on uh, your former great pitcher. I thank you guys for having me. And, you know, like I, uh, you know, like, and I'll, I'll definitely uh, – uh, cherish Roy Holiday for probably for the rest of my life. Charlie, you're the best. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. There's Charlie Manuel joining us on the Zach Gelb Show, Fox Sports, 920 the Jersey. Roy Holiday, a great baseball player, a special man.